Welcome, welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Samantha, also known as Purple Sewing Clad. I love sewing garments and quilts. If that's your bag, make sure you like and subscribe for more. Today I'm talking about pressing. I am talking about pressing from my experience. I have some disabilities and chronic illness. Um, but I think this video is still going to be a, um, amazing for anybody, even if you don't have any disabilities or chronic illnesses. You're going to be able to learn something, see some of the tools and tricks I use, um, and hopefully make your pressing experience even better. What is pressing? When you begin sewing, nobody tells you how much pressing you're going to need to do. But it is so, so important to get that proficient professional beautiful finish on your garments or your quilts so when we are pressing what we're doing is moving the seam into a position that we want it to be either open or to one side and we are using an up and down motion with our iron to get that finish nice and smooth I'm not I haven't got my iron on, by the way. I've decided to just leave it off because I don't want to risk burning myself on it on camera and then having to edit out, edit out a lot of swear words. So I'm leaving my iron off for the purposes of the demonstrations in this video. But everything you'll see is as exactly how I do it. So as I said, you're doing that up and down motion you're not dragging the iron over your project, over the seam, because that can distort the seam and you don't want that. You want to keep a nice crisp finish. First of all, when I'm pressing, the first thing I need is somewhere to press. So, the for me, I have two places that I press. The first one is my ironing board. And the second one is my desk. <laughs> so what I use is this little wool mat and I pop it on my desk next to my sewing machine and I'll use that for pressing with a little mini iron. This is great for small projects like little quilting bits or um, foundation paper piercing and it just means that I can be at my desk um, and I can do all my pressing and my sewing in one's place. It, for me, that alleviates um, a lot of movement to my ironing board and to my chair, standing up and sitting down. And that, in turn, is relieving some of the pain and some of the fatigue I can get after I've been sewing. So, very, that, I really love that. As I said, this is a wool, a felt wool mat. Um, it's perfect. I really love it. And it's just the right size. You can get them in lots of different sizes. I think... This is about 16 inches square, um, but have a look online, there are so many different sizes. The other place I like to do my pressing is my ironing board. <laughs> um, lots of people have different setups, so you might have um, an ironing board that's in a fixed position, or an ironing board that you fold out or put on the desktop. This is a standalone ironing board, and it's a minky one. But one of my favourite features about this ironing board is it's height adjustable. So I can have this in a standing height or as you can see right now I can have it in a seated height. When I'm sewing I like to batch sew all of as many seams as I can before I take it to the ironing board to do all my pressing. And if I've got a lot to do I find doing it at a seated height is better for my body as well. I don't do it seated all of the time, but if I'm very tired or I'm in a lot of pain, having it, having it at that seated height just gives me so much ease on my body, it means I can be seated and resting as I'm doing my press, pressing, which is really important. Um, looking after our bodies whilst we're pressing is just as important as looking after our makes while we're pressing them. Next thing we're using when we're pressing is our iron. So, my iron is a Rowenta Liberty steam generator iron. I'm not going to say this is the best iron to have because there is definitely some issues with it. It does like to spray out water occasionally. Um, 
But one of the best features about this iron, and the reason I love it so much, is the trigger. So this has a little trigger just here, and that gives me control over the steam. So unless I'm pressing that trigger, no steam is coming out. And that's really important for me for two reasons. I want to control the steam that's going on to my project. And I also want to control when the steam's coming out so I don't catch myself with it or burn my fingers. I can be a little bit slow with my hands, so sometimes moving them out the way is tricky. Something else I'm using when I'm pressing is my silicone mat. This is a lifesaver. It saves me so many spoons. What this is, is a rest for your iron. So as you usually when you're pressing, you're moving your iron from the horizontal. <laughs> Let me try and say that word again. Usually when you're pressing, you're moving your iron from the horizontal to the vertical position. With that, it can cause a lot of strain for me on my arms and my shoulders. That movement, because it's quite a heavy object, um, especially when you're doing it dozens of times during pressing your seams, um, I do find that can cause quite a lot of strain on my body. So that's where this comes in. So basically, it's just a rest for your iron. So as you're pressing your seams, the movement is much easier and you're not flicking your wrist up every time you've finished a seam and that's just saving me so much energy and pain through my arms and my shoulders. I definitely recommend these. I think I got mine on Amazon. I'm going to link some affiliate links below. So this is from, it's a Prim brand and it's a silicone rest. Um, the links that I'll put for Amazon are affiliate. They won't cost you any more to purchase with, but it does me, it, I do get a little bit of commission from it. So, the silicone iron rest. Highly recommend it. You can get irons that pop up um, when you stop using them, um, but they're so expensive. I think the, in the UK they're about £120. Um, and for £5 you can get something that's doing exactly the same. Um, so if, if you're looking for something like that, definitely the silicone iron rest. I will say it, it does have a learning curve to it from muscle memory though. Um, and I do, find it, I, do, I do find it took me a couple of months to actually get used to resting my iron rather than flicking it up. I don't keep my iron in the vertical in the, blah, 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 blah. I don't keep my iron in the horizontal position all the time so after I've finished doing all my pressing I will put it back up to the normal position switch it off um, it's only as I'm doing the pressing and when I'm with the iron that I'm keeping it keeping it vertical next thing I want to talk about is pre pressing your seams which sounds crazy um, but I find it a really great way to get all my seams accurate and to minimise my time stud pressing at my ironing board or sat pressing at my ironing board. So what I like to use is this. This is um, a clover seam roller. This is my preferred one. It's got a lovely ergonomic shaped handle um, and I just find it, um, it's nice and light and easy to use as well. You can get lots of different variants. I'll link this one below with an Amazon affiliate link. Okay, let me show you how I'm using my seam roller. So, with, um, this is a quilting project that I'm midway through. So, what I like to do is chain stitch all of the bits, um, and then when I'm ready, and they're all done, and I'm moving on to the next stage, I need to get ready to press them, what I like to do is pre-press them. So I go in with my seam roller, pop them open and I'm just rolling over that seam and what that's doing is popping the seam into the correct place and it's holding it open so I can quickly go in with my iron, press it and it's done. Normally with this what you're doing is you're, you'll be stood at your ironing board, holding it open, trying to get it in with your fingers, making sure it's right and then pressing it. With this method, 
as I said, I'm minimizing my time at the ironing board and I'm also saving my fingers a little bit because I'm not catching them with steam from the iron or anything like that. It's also wonderful when you're sewing garments, when you're sewing a placket and you want to just get in or a collar and you want to get in and press the seam allowance and this is just a great way of doing that as well because it's giving you that, it's helping because you're not at your iron with the heat, you, you can get that seam allowance really accurate. I highly recommend this again, um, I'll link it with an Amazon affiliate link. There is a lot of different brands, but as I said, this is my preferred one. As a little sewing gadget for whatever you're doing, whether it's quilting or garment sewing. The seam roller is great, but there are going to be occasions when you're pressing a seam where your fingers are going to need to get in and hold that seam open. Different fabrics or different substrates that are going to mean your um, seam roller just won't work. So, for those kinds of projects, what I like to use are these. These are silicone thimbles. Um, I think I got a pack of five for a couple of pound and what I can do is put them on my fingers and then as I'm pressing, um, if the iron knocks my fingers, I'm not burning them. Again, my fingers can be a bit slow so there is a, uh, there is a lot of times where I've burnt my fingers, having these on my fingers really helped me and saved my fingers. I don't have a link for these, um, but if you search silicone finger guards or silicone finger thimbles, um, you will find these. I got a pack of five for a couple of pound, um, definitely recommend those. Next thing I want to show you are these. These are clover loop turning bars. Um, these go in a pack of five and in that pack you get um, five different widths. So what you do is take for example there's these on my um, top which are little loops. You can, as, you're, as you've sewn them, you can pop that pressing bar inside them and then you hold it in place so and then press over them and that's going to give you put that seam in the right place and give you a nice crisp finish and then you just remove them and your little ties are ready to go you can also use these pressing bars for pressing folds into bits of fabric so you can pick, pop your pressing bar onto the fabric fold that over um, hold it into place and then just press over it and that will give you a neat and accurate fold in the fabric. It's wonderful on the bias as well, it stops any stretching on the bias which you can get when you're doing pressing folds in. Again, I highly recommend these clover bars. Um, again, not just for people that, have dis that are sewing with disabilities, um, or chronic illnesses. I think these are wonderful for everyone. Again, I'll pop the affiliate link for Amazon below. Let's talk about pressing larger bits of fabric. So this is a sleeve for some pajamas I'm making, but I cut them out a while ago and it's been folded up and popped away, so it is a little bit creased. But before you cut out a project, you should always press that fabric, and it can be quite difficult to press if there's lots of ingrained um, creases in there that from pre-washing the fabric or if it's a quilting fabric you might want to make sure there's zero creases in it as well. So for that what I like to do, use is this. Um, previously I've used a starch spray but I've recently changed over to a vodka spray. Um, bear with me. This, so this is um, two parts water, one part vodka and I spray it onto the fabric then leave it to dry and then press it and it removes all of the stubborn creases. It, I put a drop of um, essence oil in there as well, I use lavender, um, and that eradicates any smell, so it doesn't smell like vodka. I definitely recommend this. It adds a little bit of stiffness to the fabric as well, so it makes it easier to work with. Um, any type of stiffness spray, pressing spray, is excellent. Definitely recommend um, you have a look at some sprays out there 
for when you're pressing those larger bits of fabric it can be a big strain on your body pressing four or five meters of fabric especially for something with like a denim or a linen that really holds them creases spray that fabric let it dry then press it it's just gonna not cause as much strain on your body and it's gonna make it quicker and anything that makes the job easier and quicker is definitely two thumbs up from me other tools for pressing <laughs> sleeve board this um i use so much it's something i never thought i would need and one day i was walking home and i saw this in a skip which i really should recover i washed it all um but it is a little bit grubby um i use it all the time for things like sleeve cuffs, necklines, anything that's a bit fiddly, I can put on there and it just make, gives me a better area for pressing um, and it gives me a better professional finish. The same with the tailor hams and the seam rolls, um, they just make that pressing experience when you've got disabilities and chronic illnesses much easier as well as giving you a better professional finish. These are those types of things that you you see sewists using and you think what's that for how do i use it um and i definitely recommend looking up some youtube videos on how to use them um because it is going to make your pressing experience easier for you for your body and i think that's what's really important make sure your pressing experience um is good for your body as well as for your garment um, and that's the message I would like to give you most of all today. You want your garment to look pretty and you want it to look great. But if while you're pressing you're experiencing some pain or some fatigue, turn your iron off and walk away from your iron and you press in, take a rest. Go back to it once you've had a good rest. Because when you're tired and you're fatigued and you're in pain and you're using a hot implement like an iron, you're going to be more at risk for causing yourself burns and that's something I really want to tell you today. I, as you can see from my arms, I, ex I burn myself so often and it's because I'm tired and I'm fatigued and I'm in pain and I shouldn't be pressing. So if you're in that position, walk away, take a rest, have a cup of tea, have a nap, do whatever it is that your body needs. Pressing can wait sewing can wait there's no time scales we're doing this for fun well most of us are but please please look after your body i'm going to end this video here if you've got any messages or you want to ask me any questions please leave it in the comments like and subscribe for more videos in the future